Welcome to season 11 of Spotlight on the Arts, Lights, Camera, Confidence, the impact of an arts education. My name is Brad Carter, and as always, I'm here with the remarkable Jordan Vasala. Remarkable. Write that down. We are artists in residence here with Sydney Catholic Schools. In this season, we explore the importance of the arts, not just in education, but for life. It allows us to thrive and connect and making sense of this crazy world that we live in. In this episode, we chat with Stage 6 music students from Sydney Catholic Schools who take us on a deep dive into the intricacies of a music education. Dolly, what is your advice to students on selecting their HSC performance program? Truly pick songs that you can connect to. I would suggest writing down word for word, line for line of every song that you do and truly finding ways that you can correspond to the lyrics. I love how Dolly's talking about writing lyrics out. Um, one of my singing tutors and acting tutors, they always tell me whenever I get a song, write out all of the lyrics and find the interjection and say it as a monologue yeah. and find out what the text actually means because then when you go to sing it, well, you don't just end up singing the notes and with a blank face. You end yeah. up really understanding what you're singing about, what the purpose of the song is and how you're going to communicate the raw emotion within the song. So I think she's nailed it on the head there. Straight into it. It helps with phrasing, helps mm. with understanding, even words that you don't understand. You can look them up, you can underline them, work out where you want to put them as part of the intention mm. for the song as well. Sitting in a big white room alone, close the door, don't want the pain to come in. No, 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 no. Hayden, what was the approach that you took when choosing whether to go backing track or live musicians within your choice of repertoire? A lot of consideration went into this, a lot of discussions with teachers and mentors, and at the end of the day, it was a matter of what are you most comfortable with. Backing tracks allow you to have any instrument or even sound effects and stuff that you want, saxophones, violins, or dubstep and digital technology. But a live band gives this sort of relaxed and loose feel to it. If you go too slow, the band can adapt. If you go too fast, the band can adapt. But with backing tracks, there's not really anywhere to hide. You have to play at the correct speed. You have to play at the correct time. So there's pros and cons in both areas. One, you feel a bit more comfortable with in terms of communicating with eye contact with your fellow bandmates. And then with the backing track, you know that you can play whatever song you want without the hindrance of, do I have that type of player to play with. Tale as old as time. Hayden, you're, you are preaching to the choir. There are going to be times in your career as a musician where a backing track is the perfect solution. There's going to be other times where a live band is going to create the atmosphere and allow you to collaborate, l lead with, uh, be the energy that the room needs and a live band is going to do it. In these situations, when you're looking for your exams, you've got to find out what's going to be the most comfortable for you on the day to give your absolute best performance. And I think that's the most important thing here. What is going to give you the best opportunity to be fantastic? Mm. Luca, what was your practice regime in preparation for the HSC performance exam? As the performance HSC was approaching, I started to practice a lot of run-throughs of my entire program just to get a feel of what it would be like when I'm actually doing the HSC. And by doing those run-throughs, I was able to pinpoint any additional uh, mistakes or mess-ups that I may not have noticed before. And then I'll just work on those from section to section. And then I just practiced those run-throughs again until I got it all down. I absolutely agree, Luca. The rehearsal and refinement of going over and over your work just provides you with the performance stamina to be able to get through all of the pieces <laughs> one after the other yeah. when you get to the exam. Jack, how do you approach the learning of a technical and demanding piece? 
So I start off by sort of just like breaking down the piece, what are the different sections of it, what are the different elements that I need to look at. For example, with this piece, like some of the more challenging parts, certainly that chorus, it was really just sort of looking, okay, what does the artist do, Tommy Emanuel in this case, what does he do? Oh, okay, it's really expressive and emotive for him and so you just need to try and carry that across and also just trying to look at the really individual sections of the piece and breaking down and going like, oh, okay, I can do that. That's not that complicated. I can do that. And then you just put it together and suddenly it's not nearly as challenging as you first assumed. So, yeah. Brad Jack hit the nail on the head, finding the nuances, those moments in the music and breaking it down to bite-sized chunks. Mm. You don't need to eat the whole pizza at once. Little piece here, little piece there. And he's understanding how to break that down for him to make it successful in his presentation. Love it. Yeah. Now, Monique, your performance was a mixture of musical theatre and opera. How did you prepare for these contrasting styles? Um, I think for, especially for my operatic piece, because it was in a different language, um, I went to the languages department and figured out what do the words actually mean. And then from there, thought more about the performance aspect and how to tell a story. Talk about thinking outside the box, hey? Well, yeah. not even outside the box. Like that's right inside the box going to the languages department. Brilliant. Yeah. It's about casting a wider net to find out how you can understand your piece mm. as clearly as possible. And that's a great example, going to the languages department to find out actually what is being said in the piece. And it doesn't even have to be for, for pieces of work that are in a different language. Mm. That research, that further de you know exposition of understanding of where you are, because it's not just about what the author or the songwriter in this case was trying to say, it's also about what were the circumstances they were in when they wrote it? What mm. was the timing? Where was the place? What was going on in the world? What's the cultural impact and influence that was happening in that time? It doesn't necessarily need to translate into what's happening in the song, but it will, it will, it will influence and educate that understanding of, of, the, of that point of origin. <laughs> Marianne, how did you prepare for the technically difficult parts of your HSC performance? Well, for the parts that I found difficult, I just, first of all, I go through it again and then I really play it as slow as possible and I would try and pick out where exactly um, I'm messing up within that passage and from there I would work in small parts. So I would um, repeat the specific like arpeggio or certain scale that um, is not working out and slowly work backwards from there. So Jordan, I think you've got a couple of hot tips you want to share with us. Well, speaking right? of hot tips, I think we just heard one right there. It's about using the hardest part of your piece to be your warm up. And then it becomes the easiest part because you do it over and over and over again. And that's not just for music. That's for drama. That's for dance. Yeah. The hardest, the, the most articulate section of your monologue the part where you keep fumbling over, which I do quite a bit, that's the part that you keep running over and over and over and over again. And it's got to be the same with dance. If there's a combination that you've got to really try and nail and go from one either style, shape, level, elevation, whatever, into the next, that's got to be the one that you focus on the most and use as your warm-up. Absolutely. Well, like when you're doing choreography, to yep. throw it to Corrie land, you often find the like in-between steps are the ones that like, oh, I keep messing that up, which means that whole section is wrong. So yeah. it's those in-between steps, right, right, that you so want to just... Transitioning. Exactly. Transitioning, cause that's, and that's a big part of everything to do with the arts, is how do you transition from one moment to another? Mm. Seamlessly. Seamless. That's, that's the how, answer. Right yeah. there. You've how do you do it? Seamlessly. seamlessly.
Taylor, how do you rehearse all of the elements of the musical theatre genre? The music, acting, storytelling and character development? Well, I first break down the song. So I try and work out what am I trying to say? What's my character going through? What's the situation that my character is in? And that really drives where the performance will lead to. And then, you know, with the storytelling, every story has like a climax. Every story has a beginning and end, a middle. And you pick out those little points so that dynamically when you perform the piece, it flows really nicely, really cohesively. And then you've got, got those big climactic parts that are really entertaining um, and satisfying to watch from an audience perspective. I love how Taylor's talking about the arc of the song like and I feel like in every musical theater song it starts off on this point and then it does get to that shift yep. the energy shifts up and then there's a turning point within the song and then it goes down yep yeah and we and it either propel it propels the story forward but it, it changes the stakes and it changes their their position mm. within the within the piece and even hearing from Taylor knowing her as a student she's both a music and drama student so her mm. approach to this has been uh, twofold. She's able to look at it in, through the lens as an actor as well as a performer and as a musician, mm. which is great uh, for anybody in the arts, but it, especially when, you, when you're doing a song. Yeah. I really gotta get up. I can't stay here anymore. I just gotta get This episode was recorded at the studios of Southern Cross Catholic College in Burwood. We respectfully acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of this place where many stories have been told, artworks created and dances celebrated and shared for thousands of years. <laughs>